I'm Panini Pete, a professional chef with small town roots and a passion for one of a kind places. I'm day tripping down the back roads and main streets of America to prove that small towns are extraordinary destinations, each one rich in history and full of happiness, where people care about people and treat you like one of their own. They celebrate life, tradition, and one of a kind food culture. So join me as we gather all the local ingredients to serve up a big helping of small town flavor. Watch my body fall from high as I took to the sky. I'm still here and my body's bound. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bardstown, Kentucky. Just had a wonderful night staying in the Lincoln Suite, and we are here at the Talbert Tavern, where 232 years ago, the road for Western travel ended right here. This was the last stagecoach stop, and this is where our journey begins. Well, the road, it is long, and my stride's getting short, and the wind... The old Talbot has had many names since it was erected in 1779, which was a full year before the official settlement of Bardstown. Abraham Lincoln visited as a young boy while his parents stayed here during a court battle over a land dispute, which ultimately led to the family moving from their Kentucky home to Indiana. Perhaps the most notorious guest was none other than the famous outlaw Jesse James, who during a drunken delusion shot up the walls of the tavern hunting imaginary butterflies. But today the Talbert Tavern operates as a full-time bed and breakfast with a full-service restaurant and pub. However, if you can't get a room here, go right next door to the old Nelson County Jail. It served as a jail till 1987, but today they're hosting a much more civilized clientele at the old jailer's in bed and breakfast. But if you stay there, watch out for those imaginary butterflies. It sobers me then I'm staring at my shoes on the platform again. Well, you know, the history of Barstown is a true American story of triumph and challenge. This downtown is a living storybook to that history. So we're going to take a stroll and learn more about it. And here to help me with that stroll is one of Barstown's best storytellers, Dixie Hibbs. Pleasure to meet you, Dixie. Thank you. You're a writer? I am a writer. Uh, yes, former mayor of Bardstown. Former mayor. Tell me a little bit about how the town was founded well, and the early settlers. This was a planned town. William Bard was a surveyor and his mm -hmm. brother David up in Pennsylvania owned the land that this town would be built on. And they knew the town would be worth more money if somebody was living on it. And Mr. Bard, William, went down to the Falls of Ohio, what we now call Louisville. And he's on the southern bank when 300 flatboats come down that spring of 1780. So he talked him into coming, 33 people came. And that's when it started, that's 33 when people started Barstown. Started Barstown. Now, we have 11,700 now. I'd love to stroll around. All Eventually right. I'm uh, looking for a little breakfast this morning, but I want to hear more about the okay. history. And, well, let's and go the over, let me show you the oldest building still on Portsmouth. is stone and brick, and you can tell the different size of the windows versus the other side. That was built before 1788. This was also the site during the Civil War for the Union to have a recruitment. So how is this home being used today? Well, today it's been uh, renovated to make a really unique restaurant. Not a large restaurant, but a lot of uh, atmosphere, very good food, gourmet food. They took the floorboards up and they use those to make the tables in there. So there's every, recycled all the things they had to do. I would imagine they, they modified them. the kitchen a little bit. Well, the they had to, yes, yeah. they did. We didn't go on the open fire anymore Great. kind of thing. Well, it is gorgeous. But it Show is me a some nice, more. Some more. Well, we have lots Let's of keep things. Rolling. This 
this building is uh, here on the Port Square. We've had a lot of buildings taken down all around our town for service stations and parking lots and all. But we've been very fortunate to have over a hundred buildings before the Civil War still here. And your involvement in the preservation, I'm sure, has helped well, that as mayor and probably people before you. That's one of the biggest things with small towns yeah. is progress and that balance between progress well, and preservation. You know, uh, recycling and the greening of America and all that is so into right now. We've been recycling here a long time. We've been reusing these old buildings. Well, I can't help but notice this big building right in the center of the square. So you got a good view here. Tell me more about this, please. Well, this is the Nelson County Courthouse. This was built in 1892. It's called Richesonian Romanesque. It's really say. gothic uh, right. in design. And now, of course, it's the center of tourism and uh, chamber of commerce, planning and zoning. Uh, I want you to notice another monument we've got here. John Fitch was a native of Connecticut, and he came out here as a land surveyor. He was captured by Indians. He had the idea of taking steam and putting it so he wouldn't have to have a horse, that the steam would move the wagon. The only problem was we didn't have any roads. Don't have any roads, the wagon won't go. But then he looked at our rivers, and our rivers were the roads. That's where all 33 the rivers in Kentucky. Wow. So he put the steam to the oars, to the wheels, and in, eight, in 1788, he had a working steamboat on the Delaware River. Fantastic. That's 20 years before Fulton would have a working steamboat. Third Street, Third and Street. it's always been Third Street. Always been Third Street. Beautiful city. It's the main street going north like you're going to Louisville, and oh. it's always been our business district. There were bakers and grocers and uh, shoemakers, all these different little openings, little businesses were all in these buildings up and down. Of course, the Spalding family here has been selling merchandise since 1856. Since 1856, Six. the Spalding family, Actually, in this building. during the Civil War, John Hunt Morgan's men were here overnight. They went in and decided they wanted hats and they wanted jackets and they wanted things. They told the story about the man who came out with like eight hats stacked on top of each other on his head. He was so they occasionally donated items. <laughs> not very happily. <laughs> yeah, not very not happily. Yeah. So. Someone told me that you might be wanting uh, a good breakfast country yes, cooking. Yes, I see you're, you're leading me yeah, right to the Yeah, well, wall you know, when the sign says Mammy's Kitchen, you can't hardly beat Mammy's Kitchen. Mammy's Kitchen, this That's has got right. to be great. What about Thanks. that legendary uh, Kentucky hot brown? Oh, the hot browns are good. Hot browns are good. Well, I good. have got to go get go a few bags. Go ahead, Very nice. Enjoy Bye. it. Thank you. Go to Mammy's Kitchen. I'm looking for it. Great to meet you too. Dixie just recommended I come. Oh, here. thank you, Dixie. It's awesome. Here we are at Mammy's. Yes, you are. Welcome to Mammy's. I'm so excited to uh, learn about and eat a Kentucky hot brown. Oh, your we've it's got amazing. it here. We've got it. Great family traditions, great ingredients. I want to learn all about it. You think you can help me out? I, I can not only help you out, you can help me out by helping me cook it and show them how it's done. I get we'll to do help some you country cook ham it. with some red eye gravy, and then we'll do our famous Kentucky downtown hot brown. Oh, let's go. I love this place. Right Come away. on, you let's go. Around, Come on, Pete, you can help me cook. Come on. Come on, baby. Flavor. Your mammies, you had two that were what? Mammy, between I had Mammy Claude and, and I had Mammy Lucille. And they had how many kids now? Uh, Mammy Lucille had 17 children and then my Mammy Claude had 16 children. Both wow. lived on farms. You know, the storybook grandmothers with the right. aprons and the, the clean, they had the gardens, they respected food. I watched them cook, that was my so culinary school. Blood. You started this business originally, what was it? Like an antique store and sewing shop? My mother did custom sewing. 
and it was called So It Seems by Thelma. We decided one day we was going to fix a pot of pinto beans and, and some cornbread. Got a little hungry and, and then we had someone. some customers come in Word that wanted it. <laughs> yeah. In six months, it was a restaurant. We're going to talk about country ham right now. I mean, look My at this. Favorite. Talk about a staple here. All the locals love it. Of course, we all from Kentucky know what country ham is. We were born and raised with it. My grandparents lived up on a hill. They did the whole killing down at the bottom of the hill in the creek. Then they would preserve it, salt cure it. That's why it's so salty. You know, it fed the whole family. And I'm talking about a huge family all year round. You trim it up a little bit first? Yes, we take some fat off of it so it doesn't curl up in the skillet. We're gonna put that in there to test the skillet out, make sure it's gonna sizzle. I used to hate taking tests in school, but I have a whole new respect for the test now that we have the <laughs> country hand fat test. So it goes right in there, nice hot skillet. Yeah. Man. Already. It smells like Mamie's it's amazing kitchen. How that comes off there. <laughs> smell the love in that skillet too. That's not like door. a brand new. That's not a brand new pan. Huh? No, it's not. Uh, this is as old as I am. Develop a nice little crust on there. We use the ham hocks for our green beans, our pinto beans. Uh, the fat left over for all of our food. And just the smell, the aroma. Oh, it's unbelievable. That would get all the kids up. For sure, because if you didn't get up, you would not eat that morning. Well, yeah, bright and early in the morning, that's the alarm clock. Yes, it is. All right, so you got a great, you got a great right, color development. Go. Now, once that's ready to go. We're going to set it aside. Just run it. Give it time to rest with all those juices in it. Stay warm. We're going to turn the burner off when you have gas or you'll blow up. You want a good old smoke uh -oh. coming out here. Oh! There goes the that's coffee. Exactly Look at what that. That's burning all the drippings off of the, the bottom of the that skillet. That releases everything up off of the pan Absolutely. into the gravy. They would stick this big piece of ham back in here. Oh, nice. And just let it absorb all those juices. All right, so now we're going to plate it up. Yeah, we are. Bring it over. comes out first. Look at that. Beautiful golden brown, no longer pink. And we're going to ladle Tucky us some country ham, red hot gravy out. My favorite is, things in life, pork and coffee. Here it is. I love it. And just dunk it in there like Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. That's so good. Man, that is so good. I'm going to have grapes in there. Oh my god, you think I can get a straw back here for this? Put that in a sippy <laughs> cup. I'm taking it with us on the road. Kentucky porkachino. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, we're going to start with my version of the Kentucky hot round. Start so. off with butter. Start off with butter. So you're building a roux. You've got the oil in there. Add just all-purpose flour. This is going to be the beginning of the cheese sauce. So I'm going to bring our milk in. Milk. We make it fresh. If my customers have to wait, they'd rather wait for fresh. Fresh Parmesan cheese. Fresh Parmesan cheese. So we add that in for flavor, and that will also add to the texture. Right. Thicken it up nice, like a sauce for a Kentucky style. You keep stirring for me and I'll salt All it All right, out. I'll keep stirring. There you go. Let me in here. Salt it tablespoon. <laughs> white pepper. Yes. Why do you choose that over the black? Uh, because it's a white sauce and I don't want right. it to look like it's dirty. Very nice. Can I add my secret ingredients? Yes. All right, secret ingredients. I'm closing my eyes. Come on. Okay. One more. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. One more. I'm stirring. I'm stirring. So we've got some nice thick sliced Texas toast. Good old Texas toast. That's the base. That's going to be our base. Top round. We're going to use the same skillet because we want to fry another piece of country ham to go on top of our hot brown sauce. Same skillet as my red-eye gravy to keep all those flavors. So that thing just all day long. Keeps going, just a, on and on and on. This is baked daily turkey. We've gone from one turkey a week to a turkey a day. And I'm going to put this in here. Oh, wow. I'm going to warm it up. Did you get that? Oh, oh look at that. Brown. Golden brown. Got that nice little seal that'll help protect that bread. Good thing about an iron skillet, you can cut and use a knife in it. Mix it all in, the turkey, yeah. the ham. This cheese sauce goes over top. I can see why this dish has become so famous. <laughs> I mean, what is there not to like about this combination? We're going to uh, add bacon, which is the proper way of doing this since 19, so 1920. The classic, the classic with the tomato. And for color, I like to add cheddar cheese. Cheddar, that does yeah. look great. So it all and then you can add a little sharpness too to balance out with the Parmesan right. the tomato. I love. Now here it comes out of the oven, ready to go. The cheese is nice and melted. It's got such a great finished look to it, a nice shine. The bacon is sizzling. Look at that, guys. Look at that. 
All right, are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. ready. All right, you gotta get started. Uh, Just hold me, just hug me. That is delicious. Wow, that cheese sauce is great. It's wonderful, isn't it? Crispy bacon, the tomato. Oh, there's so many different textures there. Yes. Mammy's Kentucky Hot Brown. That is so good. Mm. Holy smokes. Now that, that's small town flavor there, baby. Believe me. It sure you is. Not, oh, that is delicious. It was great. Give great you some more country great coffee, meat, red-eye gravy. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you Thank might want to think about putting much. that on the menu. I Definitely, think there could be yeah. something there. Absolutely. This is great. We are going to, I'm going to let you get out of the way and do your work. You guys, this is Mammy. Come and see her at Barstown, Kentucky. Believe me, you won't be sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All Thank right. you all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Still ahead on Small Town Flavor. This is a producer only market. What is that alien looking thing over there? <laughs> this is the key ingredient. As we journey deeper into the history of American whiskey, Kurtz's legendary skillet fried chicken. All right, what is going on here? Fresh, delicious, and prepared almond hoop on a train. Big debut in the Stephen Foster story.